Alligator Energy, um, if you jump two slides, please. Alligator Energy is an early stage developer and explorer in uranium and energy metals. We have a very strong commitment to our stakeholders, our shareholders, and we've been working with Indigenous groups for a long time and now pastoralists. And our aim is to both advance our projects and, and discover new projects going forward. The next slide, please. The, uh, the strategy of the group is to really advance our Samphire Uranium Project South of Whaler, which I'll mainly talk about today. We have other exploration projects, and you'll see we're in the South Australian Northern Territory Corridor, which is the area where both sides of politics have approved uranium mines, both federally and state, and five uranium mines have been operating in South Australia. We have nickel cobalt in Northern Italy, which I won't talk about today, but uh, happy to engage separately on that. We're looking at other acquisitions and have been for a while, and we have a very strong strategic relationship with the major global trading group, Traxxas, which help us with our uranium marketing and other opportunities. If we go forward, the, um, the Samphire Uranium Project is located 20 kilometres south of Wyala. This was discovered some 14 years ago, advanced through initial work, uh, but not developed. We've now pulled together a resource of 18 million pound with about 10 and a half million pound indicated. Based on that, we've done now a scoping study with a schedule producing 10 million pound over 12 years uh, in what seems to be a very effective and globally competitive in situ recovery project. For those who don't know, in situ recovery is solution mining. You're not physically mining the rock in either open pit or underground mine. You are basically doing a series of rings and holes where you put down the, the circulate the groundwater that contains uh, in the sands that contain uranium, and then you, you add elixivium to dissolve it out. So the basic outcomes of this study are very good. We've got a million pound per year production profile, a low capital cost, 130 million Australian dollars, an all-in sustaining cost of around $30 a pound US. And we talk about US dollars per pound in costs because of uranium prices in US dollars per pound. Uh, a post-tax NPV of 150 million at this stage, with some good opportunity to improve that, and a payback period of 3.5 years. Overall, we generate over 900 million cash from this project, and uh, and, and get uh, a forecast net cash of 300 million. Just going forward, uh, there's a bit more detail that I won't go through in the table on the economics here, but a couple of key points. In situ recovery mining is is an effective uranium technique. And, uh, and for that reason, it is, is one of the cheapest in the world. Uh, up until 2021-22, 60% of the world's uranium came from ISR mining operations. Where we are located, just south of Wayala, and our, our particular situation is quite advantageous. The, the physical area of the mine and the deposits are quite shallow. They're only 60 to 80 metres deep where the sands, the, the encapsulated sands are. We've got excellent formation porosity, which you need for, for the, uh, to allow the groundwater containing the lixivians to move through and extract the uranium. And we've got quite high leaching dynamics. Dissolving the uranium in these sands is a bit like um, sugar in hot coffee. It dissolves and comes out with the fluids. Also, because of the location, we don't have fly and fly out. We don't have a camp. There's a ex very experienced mining and services business area in around Wyala and Port Augusta, which services Olympic Dam. Uh, as well as the Oz Minerals projects, and also the Beverly uranium, ISR uranium mine to the, to the northeast. So we've got quite a low cost of infrastructure, only 20 to 30 kilometre power line and water pipelines. We move to the next slide. This, um, this shows a diagrammatic view of how what in situ recovery uranium looks like. Uh, 60 to 80 metres to our sand layers, they're confined layers with clays at the top and the bottom. The uranium's formed over many millions of years, just um, solidifying around the sand grains. And what we're doing is reversing the process. We, we circulate the saline groundwater. We dose it with an lixivient, only two litres of lixivient to every 10,000 litres of groundwater circulated. Dissolves the uranium, brings it through a, a processing plant where we extract it on the resins and, uh, and pull the uranium oxide off in a clean manner, ultimately to be calcined and packed as uranium oxide in drums. The, the, at the moment, the resource we have um, really is restricting the throughput. We're now drilling again now. We anticipate to increase that resource. And if we do, we have um, the major components of this plant sized to about 1.2 million pounds per annum, which means for very little more capital, we're going to get a lot more throughput. 
<clears throat> excuse me. And now the, the important thing to understand about ISR mining is you do often start them around this size, one to 1.2 million pounds. Beverly Uranium Mine, which started 25 years ago and has been continuous operations, started around 1.2 million pounds. The Peninsula ISR operation in Wyoming and the UR Energy operation there all started around that size. And you can modularize it. You can expand production as you expand and find new areas of uranium by doubling the capacity in a modular fashion. We move to the next slide. And you're seeing a layout of the initial resource that we have now in the Blackbush uh, project area. We have full access and agreements over this area to take the project forward. Uh, we've, we've schematically shown the sort of mining secrets through the ground there. Um, the important thing about this is we have expandability to the north and to the west and to the east of these, uh, this area where we are, and I'll show that on another diagram shortly. We move forward, please. <clears throat> We've put out now an estimated five-year schedule to move into production by year four and five. This year, year one is 2023. We'll be undertaking a field recovery trial. That's the FRT there. That's where we do just two or three trial rings of holes where we extract uranium out of the central hole and we allow the lexivian to fall down on the outside hole. So you're basically doing uh, cylinder, small cylinders of, uh, of the ore at a time. So we'll be doing a trial of that later this year and our approval documents uh, are being finalised now. Uh, we're already drilling again on the site and we'll be drilling right through. We've expanded the resource from 14 million pound to 18 million pound in the last six months. We're intending to expand that again this year. The, we've been talking to nuclear utilities already, and I'll talk about the, the, the Iranian market shortly, but we've been, been talking to them already because there is now a, a long forward-looking curve that nuclear utilities are looking for replacement contracts. And, uh, and, and we need to be in the discussions now because potentially by year two, when we're in feasibility, we could put early offtake contracts in place, subject to financing, subject to approval. We have the approval process there and then the, the rest of the key tasks we're going to go for. Now, this puts Samfire project probably around uh, where Boss Energy was, and many of you will know Boss Energy, they're currently in construction for a similar ISR mine at Honeymoon is in South Australia. This puts us about 2020, where they were in 2020. If we go forward, please. There's a number of next steps we're doing this year to let everyone know. A pilot field recovery trial is the most important step. We've done a massive amount of bench scale test work using cores pulled out of the ground from the horizons using the, the entrained saline water, and that's found good recovery options and given us good technical factors for the operation of the plant. But there's nothing like trialling an in situ. Nearly every ISR mine in the world does an in situ trial. So we need that to feed into a feasibility study. We've got a massive amount of ongoing stakeholder engagement, both in the Wyala Township, the Wyala region, with our pastoralists, and, and we have an NTMA agreement with the local uh, Indigenous group. We're continuing some studies on infrastructure and, and other technical aspects of the project, as well as expanding the resource, and, of course, looking for resource expansion. And you'll see where the Blackbush West and East deposits are that we showed on that previous diagram. We've got expandability around that immediately in the channels nearby. As well as that, there's known paleo channels determined by ground gravity to the south and extending to the south that we're now working on getting on the ground to explore, with an additional prospect plum bush, which has had no work done on since about 2011. If we go to the next slide, um, one of the key opportunities, uh, just back one. Thank you. One of the key opportunities we have is in situ recovery is really just pumps and tanks. And, uh, and so it's a very low power draw. This project would only draw at this size about 1.2 megawatt. Now, while we'll size a, a power line for four or five megawatt, it means that the, we've got the imminent possibility of using renewable power for this project. There is already a number of renewable power projects within the Wyala region. There's a, a number of major international players now looking for to increase that renewable spread based on the new hydrogen hub that the state government is implementing to the north of Wyala. So we've got that potential because of the, the low consistent power draw. A distance from Wyala may allow us to use electric vehicles and light trucks just for servicing with people and logistics. 
And we're linking into, uh, we tend to link into the work being done with on highway electric prime movers, which which Oz Minerals and Cube Transport are doing with a, a company called Janus Electric. And they're doing a trial of rolling rollout battery packs in prime movers to, to transport logistics to the north of the state. So we've got an opportunity, if we start early with this, that we could set up a near carbon free energy project and we'll be working on that going forward. Can we jump another slide, please? This is an, a diamond of the field recovery trial, which incorporates those red large dots of three trial rings, one expanded up the top there, which will show the trial we're intending to do in the latter part of this year. Um, the pink monitoring welds around that uh, are there to monitor and make sure that the lixivian and the material stays within the confines of the rings that we're mining. And this is a, a, a very controllable thing with ISR mining because you understand the hydrogeology, the groundwater moves exceedingly slowly, and, and basically after you've mined an area, you just run groundwater through and until it dilutes down any remaining lixivian, which then essentially reacts with the surrounding calcium and, and, is, uh, and basically disappears. We are not allowed to have any long-term impact on the groundwater, saline or not. We go to the next slide. We're doing a significant amount of work uh, on ESG in our company. We've had more than 40 Indigenous employees in our Alligator Rivers area, and we're using a, uh, an Indigenous-owned drilling company last year and this year up there. And I'm not really talking about our exploration today just due to the time, but we are doing a significant program up there again this year. In Samfire, we're doing a, a significant amount of work in improving the rehabilitation in sites that we're drilling. We, we're rehabilitating all the time now with our drill holes. And we're doubling the bush density quite successfully, and we've actually won a commendation for the Premier's Environmental Awards on that work. And we've recently negotiated a full Indigenous group, a full uh, agreement with the Indigenous group over the Cooper Basin, which is our Big Lake Uranium project, which is pure greenfields looking for new ISR fields. So with that, I'd like to, to thank um, the viewers and, uh, and Tim for, for letting us get a, a talk going forward about alligator. Uh, in terms of the uranium market, I'm happy to answer some questions around that, but we see this project coming on in a four to five year time frame, which really is suiting the time when a lot of Western utilities are ramping down their use of Russian material. So, so we see ourselves coming on at just the right time for the market. Thanks very much. Thanks, Craig. Um, quite a few questions here. Now, the, the, the big one is uranium seems to get overlooked when we're talking about kind of renewable energy. Well, why do you think this is the case? Uh, well, it's not being overlooked internationally. Um, you'll see that the UK announced this week they want to expand their nuclear from 15% to 25% of generation with a big emphasis on small modular reactors. Uh, small modular reactors being uh, constructed now in, near Toronto and also in the US. And many of these small modular reactors are load following. In other words, you link them up to renewable projects so that when renewables are generating a lot of power, the SMRs can be dialed down. When renewables are down at night time, for example, the SMRs, SMRs come up. So they actually, internationally, nuclear is being related to renewable power in a very, very big way. In Australia, it's not there yet. Let's see. I think you'll see state governments and federal governments have a serious look at the small modular reactors as they start to be commercially operable by the latter part of this decade. And there's, there's a question here about people, right? It's a good question. Um, can you kind of give us a brief overview of, of your kind of experience in, in the uranium industry? And, and then what's the market like at the moment in terms of getting good technical people involved? Yeah, well, we've been recruiting for, we, we did a major capital raising in 2021. We were recruiting uh, from that time through. Uh, our chief operating officer, Andrea Marsland smith she was the uh, one of my senior managers at the Heathgate Beverly Mine for about 15 years. So she's got a significant in-situ recovery experience. I've managed uranium mines in open pit and underground, but not ISR. And so we've now attracted a team under Andrea to develop this project and take it forward. And we're training new people. We actually have our first graduate, and we've put more on soon to train people up in this area. And we're about to make another couple of key appointments. Recruitment takes time in the current market. And we are linked through to some specialty engineering and advisory firms in the Wyoming and Colorado region where they've been operating ISR for many years. And that's because there isn't such a big base load of engineering and other expertise in Australia. But, but we're certainly recruiting and we're certainly uh, training people up. 
Um, and and Traxxas, you mentioned Traxxas. Uh, Traxxas, a few of our uh, online viewers would understand that they, they also um, undertake off-take agreements. Are they part of that equation? No, we've got an agreement with Traxxas where they're purely our marketing agent to help us put in contracts between Alligator and the utilities directly. So it's not an off-take agreement. Uh, but it offers other benefits. For example, if we're commissioning a project like Samfire and we're, we're ramping up and we need a little bit extra uranium to, to provide the first uh, deliveries of uranium, then Traxxas trade between 10 to 15 million pounds of uranium a year. So we can access some of that to feed into our deliveries. Um, we could also do some co-bidding with Traxxas, whereby if we're producing 1.2 million pounds a year, we could bid on 1.5 million pounds a year of contracts and deliver a combination of produced and traded uranium. But not only that, if and when, uh, potentially during early 24, we put in the first offtake agreements um, in place, Traxxas have uh, committed to work with us to put in up to US $15 million into our feasibility and pre-development work. So we've got a strong relationship with them in, in many ways. I've known the key players in Traxxas for many years in, the Iran in my previous uranium marketing work. So it presents great opportunity for a company like ours. And and you managed to kind of looking at the capex, it looks pretty low relative to the to the resource. Is is that because of the the process, the mining process? Yes, correct. The, the you're really dealing with pumps, tanks, uh, header tanks, uh, IX plant, which is quite small. So so the direct capital is quite low. And in fact, that capital figure of 130 million includes 40 percent contingency and escalation factor. And that's because it's at a scoping stage. So we, we quote the major capital items and then you do percentages of things like pipe work, electrics. So while it's an early stage estimate, we've been quite cautious about making sure it's conservative. 